So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Sherry and I'm going to go through the next steps and um, what would, uh, what if you would like to be a fast responder, what you'll need to do. So required training um, includes um, ICS 100, 200 and 700, which I mentioned um, uh, in prior uh, units. So that's, uh, the links are up on the screen and you can click on those and take them. Um, if you've taken them in the past five years, we'll also accept um, a copy of the certificates from that. Um, complete an employer MOU if needed. Um, in most cases that won't be needed because there's an agreement that uh, people will um, continue to assist during disasters. Um, taking the American Red Cross training, the shelter fundamentals training and the shelter manager training. Um, at the end of your participant handbook, there is a list of um, different um, uh, member requirements, fast responder requirements, and they include links to these trainings. There is a one pager on how to access um, the online uh, Red Cross uh, trainings as well, uh, how you can, even if you're not a Red Cross member, how you can access those. So uh, you can go through those documents um, that you have um, with you. So we also, member sustainment trainings, um, require those on a quarterly basis. Those are all uh, recorded uh, via webinar and are um, archived on the, the FAST website. So you can go back in and listen to those. Um, if you can't make the actual day that they're occurring, um, they will be posted and then you can um, go back in and listen to at a later time. Um, we'll require you to participate in monthly, quarter, monthly uh, notification tests. So these are um, uh, alert, alerts and warnings that are coming from the NC Terms, the team management uh, system that you will be uh, registered in as a FAST member. And uh, we will do practice um, uh, notifications on a monthly basis on the third Wednesday of the month. Um, whenever there's shelter trainings or exercises that we become aware of, we'll share that information with you. and. Um, we will strive to do put fast teams together um, to respond in those uh, exercises. And then um, as, as needed, complete yearly reviews, post deployment, hot washes or after action reports and surveys. So um, those, are, those are the things that are required. Um, um, also in the back of your, um, um, or at the bottom of your uh, participant handbook, you've got a list of um, recommended trainings as well. So these are just some examples um, uh, of what we've got back there. Um, uh, decision making and problem solving, effective communication. A lot of this comes from a FEMA training, um, general information about shelters, video. So there's a couple of lists with um, links to videos um, that might be um, helpful as you're uh, rounding out your training. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to quickly do um, is there's in the at the end of your participant handbook there is a list of forms. So some of the forms that we talked about during our training, um, we get the Red Cross dormitory registration form, um, the Red Cross CMIST worksheet that they use. Some of these forms can be utilized um, in identifying people who might have access and functional needs that have been identified when they first register in the shelter. Um, copies of uh, the quick notes, uh, suggested travelers uh, checklist, uh, pre-deployment checklist, um, the uh, fast activation and deployment standard operating guidelines, deployment checklist, go kit, um, fast resource request form, the ICS 213, the activity log, the 214, um, on the spot assessment strategies checklists, um, a list of the instructional videos that I just mentioned, um, the American Red Cross EDGE registration uh, page on how to register, um, and uh, uh, a map of the North Carolina Centers for Independent Living. Uh, these are great resource uh, centers um, that may be able to assist in um, finding different uh, supplies and services and supports. And then uh, the very last uh, form or document is the North Carolina FAST uh, responder requirements. So um, what we would need um, if you're interested in being a responder um, and if we needed to respond, for example, 
this weekend, the things that are, are most important for you to do is to sign up on the NC Terms website. And that was the website that you used to, to register for this class. And then the second would be to um, have uh, background uh, verification, background check verification. Um, one of the things that is uh, in order to go into any shelter where there might be um, some vulnerable populations is a registration. All, all Red Cross volunteers and DSS volunteers have to have regist uh, background registrations, sorry, background, um, background checks. So I don't need a copy of the background check per se. If you had a background check for your um, current employer employment, if a letter from your supervisor saying that you you submitted to a background check and you passed um, would be perfectly fine with that. So in order to deploy, I would need you to register in NC terms and have a copy of background check verification somehow. Um, and the other things we can continue to work on, um, uh, please feel free to contact me if you're interested in starting this process and we'll get you signed up and into the system. So um, all of that being said, are there any questions at all that people have? Okay, feel free to email me. Um, I, uh, I think you all have my email address. Uh, well, there you go. There's my email address or my contact information. Um, and um, thank you all for, or for spending uh, your time with us and for learning about our FAST program and look forward to uh, chatting with anyone who's interested in being a responder. And uh, a big shout out to uh, my, my fellow instructors. Um, I appreciate all of the time and work that you put into doing this and um, appreciate you all. So thank you and have a good day. <laughs>